we should try to do what we can to help facilitate that in, it, in any way, whatever thousands of dollars or whatever is, is needed to complete it. I know that a lot of money was put into baseball, <clears throat> and I think a lot of money should also go into recovering a very important piece of land in some area. Thank you. I have one more question. I'm sorry, Deb, that's again. How much money were we asking for the wetlands? Would it have been that substantial that it couldn't have um, done without for the, new, the other project with the underpass? I completely under, I, I, I'm uncomfortable fielding questions at this point because now we're really talking about the council's vision for its own city as opposed to it's a far city. It's far yes, city. I'm sorry, it's your city. Yeah. I, no, yeah, so I don't know how you want to field these questions from now on. Do you want me to continue fielding them? Well, Deb, I can answer that. Regan Street Project's been on the talk. And how are we going to fund the entire Regan Street Project? Isn't this connected to a bigger project that's like $8 million? Can I answer that first? Well, it kind of coincide with what he yes. just said, so that's why I was asking. But go ahead. The Regan Street Project has been discussed five or eight years. Uh, Julie, you've been down to the authority. You've been here regarding the flooding, so where there's no question of flooding up there. Yeah. Mr. Whipple isn't here to see He had mentioned flooding also. And, and of course, we all know about Reagan Street. A project this magnitude is discussed for years, getting the funding sources together and lining things up. That said, that, this is why it's so critical to put all the, the funds possible in the phase one. Phase one is so critical to get it finished. Once phase one's created and finished, then you can start adding other pieces to it. And we have to get phase one. So how much money did you actually need to complete the phase one? And isn't it, wasn't it possible to still do or put some of the money towards the wetland? I think she's asking what was allocated for $10,000 was asked for. It was right off here earlier. Okay. But that gets us closer to what the municipal authority's allotment is as well. So that way they're not putting in more money than us. The idea was that each were going to come to the table with 250000 And just to now clarify, the Council of Sunbury does not support the wetland project. That's, that's, not, okay. true. that's not true. Just to yeah, clarify that. True. Okay, first of all, that's not true. Okay. I've been on that wetland more than the mayor's been. He just got here, so we just find about the wetland. We all love the wetland. <coughs> We've seen right. this for years. We know we know what's going on. We know what's going on. Okay. Anyhow, Joe, that's right, you've been here. Yeah, I know exactly how you guys work. Yeah. So anyhow, Deb, that's where we're at here. All right. Okay. Thank you. Technically, $10,000 is a spit in the river. That's all right. We're going to have Linda Sterling finish the budget revision, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, every time we make changes to the way council allocates projects for a given year in CDBG, um, we, do, we do something called a budget revision certification, and I bring information back to council so that they can vote. Because all of, the CDCOG does not own the CDBG money, the city does. So um, I'm here tonight to ask, the council, to ask the council to consider a budget revision. Um, and it's a budget revision for a very specific pur purpose. In um, last year, around this time, my boss, Bill Siegel, and I came here to explain that there had actually been an error made on the CDBG contract for. 2016. Um, the amount that that council agreed to for CDCOG's administrative funds for that year was $49,130. But because of, the, of an error in the contract, that was inadvertently reduced to $40,130. So last year we came to a public meeting asking council to consider um, giving that $9,000 back to CDCOG basically in that and at that time, it was said that the grant budget it, it was approved, the request was approved, and it said that the additional funds would come from program income and a small amount would come from Chestnut Street. After several months, DCD has kind of changed the way program income is looked. Program income is something, is money that comes in because of CDBG funding. So 
if you demolish a house and then you sell the lot, the money from the lot that, the, that came into the city from the lot goes back into the CBBG pot to be used again. Um, it turns out that now you cannot use program income, which is now called another name, for administration. So I'm here tonight to ask for a budget revision so that we take that money out of uh, a fire department line item that was unused from 2016 and Chestnut Street, and then the program income will go into Chestnut Street. So there's it's really, there's no more money going to be exchanging hands. It's just a difference of how we, we are going to pay for the money. And since we came here last year and told you exactly how we're going to pay for it, now I'm coming back and saying, I'm sorry, we need to change that. And this is how we pay for it. So in 2016, Sunbury Fire Department purchased equipment. Um, there was a low bid, and the, the uh, department was was able to take a higher bid because there was somebody who was of a known um, reputation with them. So that left some money left in that account to be rebudgeted. That's $2,510.75. Um, 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 the current budget certification here shows that $2,510.75 going from that line item that has been completed into admin for 2016 grant. And also under Chestnut Street Utilities, the current budget of that is uh, $59,157.24. Um, a change here would be $6,489.25. The revised budget would then be $52,667.99 for Chestnut Street, and that change would go into the admin as well. Is that clear as well? <laughs> no, I know, it's confusing. Do any council people have any questions, concerns? Basically, we're making changes so that money can come out of Chestnut Street for admin, but then the program income of $9,000 that we were going to put into uh, the admin will go into Chestnut Street instead. So we're just switching funding sources.
In my opinion, as the mayor of Sunbury, we are in a crisis right now regarding our city police department, our city budget, and our city hall is completely in disarray and disorganized in a free-for-all with fingers being pointed in all directions instead of working together to find a solution. While our council is great with joining the bandwagon for anything positive it will help, that will help them look good, they are also great at finding flaws of others, picking apart anything that is positive that doesn't fit their wanting, their wants, and rearranging the public's view from them onto someone else. Our city is falling apart. We also have members of this council who were part of the previous administration who were involved with the decisions and failed actions with a grant regarding our failed citywide camera system and are trying to push the blame onto others as well. It is time for accountability and is my duty to speak up about what is truly going on. I am already foreseeing the backlash from our council for speaking to all of you. In my opinion, when I try to be open and transparent in order to keep the public aware of what is going on, our city council members find a way to manipulate words and actions to fit their own agendas and to get the public's eye off of them and onto someone else to take the blame. I will not allow our city council to continue to use me or anyone else as the personal scapegoat any longer. I was elected by the people to serve the people and that is what I am doing. I support our city and I support our police department, but I do not support the current actions of our city council. I am not a business owner nor my landlord, as other council members are. And I have put on hold my future goals and career in order to be the mayor of Sunbury. I ran for this position because the city deserves someone that will give their 100% and benefit the city and not themselves. During my first few months in office, I made real attempts to develop professional and personal working relationships with our council members by going to events, and socializing with them in the office and out in the public. Perhaps I place too much importance on that in listening to them and not as much into our city by releasing information as I should have. I am only one person on this council and I am truly an ally for our city and all people here. I felt that it was important to try and socialize and get along with our council in the beginning and I still will continue to try and work with them. They clearly and publicly do not have the same interest and have shown their unwillingness to accept me as a member of the team. Not everyone must like everyone and be best of friends, but we must work together during our official capacity for the best interest of our city and not ourselves, and that is currently not happening here in Sunbury. In my opinion, our council continues to fuel negativity which causes turmoil and stress while, while our city is circling the drain. Our council is more worried about trying to push one guy out of office mm -hmm. who the council feels is a threat to their current established regime and who is trying to be transparent and represents a positive change to our city. Sunbury deserves better than what is currently being given and I apologize to our residents, our visitors, and our police force for all the negativity that is surrounding our city, especially by all of our elected officials, myself included. During this time of crisis that our city is facing, we should be showing that we are united and not divided, and pushing out as much positive that our city has in order to help maintain our city's morale and showcase that we will overcome all that is going on. A section of a previous statement of mine to WKOK with exact words. Tim Miller is under a signed contract with the salary and benefits that Mayor Dave Persing, Rick Reichner, Beth Kramer, 
Jim Eisner, and Dale Henry all voted 5 to 0 and approved at a council meeting in 2016. Tim Miller will remain on the city's current budget for the remainder of the year, and we must budget accordingly for 2019 until April 30th. In January of this year, we renewed Tim Miller's contract as a sign of good faith and his salary was not affected. The council's release statement. In the mayor's statement, he said Tim Miller would remain on the city's budget until 2019 due to a contract that was given to Miller by former council members and former Mayor Dave Person. Earlier this year, Mayor Kurt or Mayor Carlovich decided to meet to renew the contract with new terms and conditions. In my opinion, their combined statement is incorrect and manipulative. The employment agreement in 2016, which was approved by the previous administration, which three of our current council members were, was in effect and was the reason how 2018 was budgeted before I became mayor, hence Tim Miller's current salary. During January of this year, Tim Miller did approach me about changing his employment agreement in order to show the public that we were working together and council was well aware of this during the process. I am one person out of five and one equal vote on this council. For them to suggest or imply that I have done this on my own clearly shows that they are insulting your intelligence because they are assuming you do not understand the laws and rules that we must abide by. No one person on our council could ever enact an official city contract on their own without a majority vote by council to accept it. The original employment agreement was voted and accepted by council in December of 2016 and became effective in January 2017 for a period of four years ending in 2020. And the January 2018 employment agreement was in place for a period of three years ending in 2020 as to not change the length of time from the original agreement. Yes, Tim Miller is under the same salary as the previous administration approved because the salary remained exactly the same as the original agreement. His benefits also remain the exact same except for the addition of a $200 monthly travel allowance which replaced the use of a city-owned vehicle to take home Due to, due to him not living close to our city. He is no longer receiving the travel allowance. The original agreement also allowed a lump sum payment of salary if something were to happen to his employment with us. We agreed to change it in the new agreement to being paid in bi-weekly payments instead of a lump sum. Council approved the updated agreement on January 22nd of this year during a public council meeting with Councilman Eister moving to pass the resolution and seconded by Councilwoman Kramer, followed by unanimous yes vote. I am respecting and honoring the settlement agreement that all of our council unanimously voted yes to accept and will not comment any further regarding such. Council's recent statement was that it is illegal to delete things from a public mayor's page. In the beginning of the year, I was approached by Councilman Eister in the city clerk's office and was at, at, and I was asked to delete any postings that re referenced him in any way off my mayor's page. I said okay, and I deleted the postings that referenced him out of respect due to him asking. In my opinion, at that time, he either knew that it was illegal and was trying to get me to unknowingly break the law, or he did not know, and when he did find out, he did not approach me to make sure I knew it could no longer be done. I did not, I did not know that I was not allowed to delete my postings off my mayor's Facebook page that I personally posted. The deletion was not meant to censor anyone as I represent and support transparency in our government, and our council never approached me about this to make sure I knew. I have now looked into this topic, which is extremely new, and it does seem that with me being an elected public official with a public account, it means I may not be allowed to delete information that is posted on the account. I am moving forward and nothing will be deleted from 
my public page so that nobody feels that they're being censored in any way because that is not my agenda. The public's input is extremely important to me, and if you go to my public page, you'll be able to view many negative comments that have been written by the public and are still there because the public's input is important. In my opinion, our council members from the very beginning have been trying to find a way of keeping me out of the decisions and business of Sunbury, especially with our Sunbury Police Department, and try to destroy my reputation. I feel that with my military police background, combat experience, and a bachelor's degree in criminal justice makes me more experienced than our council members with learning and understanding what our police department needs and goals should be for the safety of our city. In my opinion, I am the only member on our city council that truly supports our police department. I have talked with all of our officers, I have done ride-alongs, and I want to see it succeed and hire new officers because our city cannot continue with only five officers in our department. I have a screenshot from July 5th of a text message that in my opinion, Councilwoman Kramer unknowingly sent to a group text which involved all council members when she thought she was only texting Councilman Rick Reichner because he was the last to respond to a previous discussion on a different matter. In my professional opinion, as your mayor, their combined agenda is to disband the police force and they're using our lack of officers right now to fuel their own personal goals. Councilman Chris Reese, since January, has been discussing with and trying to persuade our council and myself why we should disband the Sunbury Police Force and bring in the state police for coverage. I do not support his plan of disbanding our police force, which means the removal of the Sunbury Police Department. If we only receive state police coverage, would mean that a majority of the police calls would go unanswered, and the coverage would take one to two hours or even longer for response. The size of Sunbury and the amount of calls and trouble that we currently have here would not be able to handle not having our own police force, and it would further risk great safety to our city, yes. our residents, and visitors if it were to happen. In my opinion, the morale of our city employees is also at an all-time low. We have city employees in different departments that are afraid to speak up mm -hmm. about the truth and actions of certain council members due to the risk of losing their jobs. Our city employees deserve to be treated better than what they are and have been receiving by some of our current council members. It is absolutely sickening that some of our city employees feel they cannot discuss how they are treated or what is happening because they know that majority of the council is a group that will stand by one another and will fire the employee for speaking up against them. As I have stated, as I have stated pre repeatedly since I have been in office, I have faith in our city, our police department, and the public, and I truly hope that all of our council can put aside their differences and move forward for the best interests of our city and work together as a team and not try to divide us further than we already are by nitpicking. Only you, the public, can truly make a difference and bring about the change that is needed for our city to succeed and survive. I call upon you, the public, to continue coming to our city council meetings, be engaged in our city, pay attention to what is truly happening, and make your decisions and bring the change that is desperately needed to the polls. If this statement is viewed by our council as it is me not wanting to get along, I apologize, and that is not the case. We are at a critical turning point in the history of Sunbury. The reality is, as of right now, all I am able to do is defend myself from our council while trying to protect our city's best interest and bring you the information and call attention to what is really happening in City Hall because it is my opinion that the members of our council will continue to try and block me every step of the way. 
Copies of this statement are made available to all members of the press and to the public. Thank you. Potentially getting rid of the police department. I also brought up consolidating the police department. I've had conversations with multiple police officers, right? We just talked about it over the weekend, about how since I've talked to them, it doesn't make sense to get rid of the police department. Well, why are you involved in that? You're not even in charge of the police department. We all are involved in that. Now, hang on a second. So, next thing. I didn't know anything about this conversation with our officer in charge. By it the just way. happened over the weekend. Well, it so, should be you in charge. It should be him who's in charge of the police department. Let, let what let is your department, Chris Reese? I'm not. I'm what not is your department? Isn't it roads? Isn't it supposed to be the roads? I. Why are you involved with the police we're department's all involved. decisions? Yeah, we're all involved. That we're is. All involved. That's not what I was under the impression when we first started here. You know, uh, when he first started, we were under the impression that he was in charge of the police department. Thank you. Just like David you were supposed to be in charge of roads. Uh, Reitner was in charge of code. Eisner was in charge of parks and recreations. And Beth, I don't know what you're, you're out on your own. I don't know what you're doing. I'm in charge of budget. Yeah, well, I'm grinning and laughing. I don't know if it's all funny. Listen, you don't know what happens in those executive meetings. I can tell you whatever you're doing in there is a reflection of what you do to us out in this public room. That's not true. That's what I mean. or that, uh, that text or whatever. That's it's what you do. You sneak, you lie, and you do whatever you can to do what's in the it's best interest of that trigger. Am I in control? No, she yeah. can, I, can I talk to her? Yeah, I, I, let, I let him talk. So a couple other things. So the contract, when we made the, the statement about the contract with Tim Miller, we never said that it had solely to do with her, the reason why the, the contract was what it was. All we referenced was that the contract previously was no longer in place because we all did vote in January to do a new contract. At that point, the old contract was gone. It was a new contract by this council. When Tim left, it had nothing to do with that contract. It was a separate <coughs> contract, which was different than the contract itself. So all we were trying to say was, saying that the stipulations of everything was due to the contract, that part was not true. So we were not trying to mislead anybody. That's where that statement came from. The saying that it all had to do with the contract, that's not true. It's a, it was a settlement agreement, a uh, separation agreement, excuse me. Well, this is what I'm gonna do, because I don't believe anything that comes out of your mouth. Okay. I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna follow right to know. I'm gonna follow right to know what his contract was in 2016, one in 2018, and I'm gonna file a contract, or a, a right to know on what his departing uh, contract was. That's, a, that's how we're gonna find out the truth. Can you, you can do and I have a feeling that you're not telling any of it. It's a, you, can, yeah, you can do it. It's all the same thing. And you know, I'm trying to talk here. So a couple other things. Uh, the Facebook part, we'll reference that. So you said in there about how it was only recently discovered. If Jim brought it up previously, it's because it was recently discovered. It was not brought up previously. He asked me to delete things off of it. No, no, no. The, law, the lawsuit. The determination in the court. Okay? Now also, we want to... Yeah, no, I didn't want to bring this up, but now I have to. I have a list of things that I've gone to the mayor personally. Because I don't like to do this in public. I've personally gone to him and tried to work things out behind closed doors. All of them were this. So 
there was an email sent out to the entire city that said that we all have to listen, we all have to respond to his emails and all the council's emails. And that every department of the city has to respond to that. I approached him and I said, I thought that, that was overstepping boundaries because that was not part of what we all voted on. No one talked about that. I approached him. Every one of these approachments that I've had, I was either ignored, the phone was hung up on, or I was told to get out of the office. The second one was there's a directive of the entire city, uh, excuse me, about leaving, going home early. No one approved that. Everyone was sent home early. There was a time that we looked into the consolidation of the police force. I was told that's not my department to stay out of it. It's everyone's department. And then also about the Facebook page. And I said that we should have a Sunbury Facebook page. I was told that we did matter. Oh, I'm just trying, I don't know if anyone else wants to have any comments. I just feel like we just got attacked like crazy there on things that... What what, what were you, What was the council doing for the previous week while I was sitting at home with my mouth shut and hiding in the corner? <laughs> All over the media. The, the city knows what's going on with the council. We reference Every single little bit. You're picking out the wetlands. I'm the only person that has called in the Army Corps of Engineers with the wetlands. I've got them to give us the, the paperwork that we need. I'm the only one working with the PAD to be on the wetlands. I am the only one putting this thing together. It was a friend for Councilman Eister because he wants to he just want something good. Well, may I say something, please? And no, I'd like to say that um, Regina Russell, because it's impossible for me to talk about this be here and listen to this. And I, I'm going to have to say, if you are in charge of a department, that should be your department. If you're meeting with someone from another department, that's undermining the person who is in charge of that department if you're meeting with one of his people without his knowledge or saying, hey, I want to meet with Hare. I think you should be included in that meeting. Can I reference that exact fact? Go ahead. Can I just address that real quick? I actually called Councilman Reese because there was a street closure that I was getting phone calls at home about. And when I had talked to him about it, he had mentioned there was rumors going around about all this stuff. And he, the only thing he told me was, listen, was it a thought in the past? Yes, consolidation. And I, I advised him at the time, consolidation would be great, but that's not either here or there, we need to get cops. So to, to say that we met, no. I called him about a street closure on Water Street that I had to get phone calls about. That's, it's, it's not like we're going out of our way, and I'm personally not going out of our way to do things in the police department. But when I came into office, the first thing that I was assigned to do was look for a new police station. Because there was a conflict of interest at that point with the mayor publicly speaking against one thing. And at that so, time, the entire council knew there was no money to do anything regarding the current building, to build one, or anything else. We did not know It was that. all a front, in my opinion. But we did they not incurred know the that. expense. But nothing was done, we did not know that. <laughs> We only found out once we spent all the money on legal fees. May I ask something about the contract with Officer Miller, please? That is, it's been stated that he has some very deep disease, something very crucial. This is something that has been long go been going a long time in his life. He should have been transparent and reveal that to the city before he was put under four-year contract. So now we have to pay while he's now claiming illness for something that he knew about before he became the chief of police. What did so, he do? So Down he himself should, in the eye? I mean, what, he wasn't patrolling. He didn't get what doing what he should do is he should relinquish. He broke the contract by not being Real, being real about his disease. 